Okay, so I'm about ready to unwrap this thing, and um, just to let you guys know, I did do a little bit of management on this guy uh, in the background while this was encoding, and it's very minor stuff, stuff I really don't need to explain. I'll just let you know what I did. First off, I checked the slide going back to make sure that nothing would um, disappear or whatever, and I realized that this these pins usually stay stationary to help guide guide the weapon so when I had this really short it was cut off here so I extended this rod to go back um, the other thing I did was I took off the um, ejection port here which actually stays with the gun when the slide goes back okay and um, if I show it here I gave it a shell modifier so I just selected these uh, faces from the gun and detached it and then hit it with a shell modifier with a .5 going in inwards. The shell modifier is uh, qu quite a handy tool. Um, if I pick this here and I hit... Uh, I guess control i is not working. Well, if I take these guys and uh, grow that one time... Oops, that's a editable editable poly. I hit grow one time and delete that. This is what I ended up cutting off the model. And then the shell modifier is just a way to take a flat surface and turning it into a thick surface to give you the edges. You can see I did a 0.25 inner. I could also do outer and I would extend it outwards but I kept that at zero. So that's all I did for that. Very, very simple. The other thing I did was I um, if I hide that I created a box in here just so that there wouldn't be any negative space that when it clicked you know, when the slides slap back that there would be something here which I'm probably going to paint just solid black um, and otherwise I would see through the model see an opening if it's not two-sided. Now one of the things I haven't done on this yet, which I was going to do, is I just put a box in here and cut out cut out the um, the sides of it. You can see that here and just kind of kind of slapped it in there. However, if I uh, go to object properties and I say to actually do back face call, it's, it's not there. There because the box was outward facing. So if you ever need to flip normals, you can always just select those and just hit the normal modifier and that flips them. You can check it here. Okay. So I just uh, convert that back. So now even though this is back face calling, it's uh it's nicely in there. Um I d I didn't really mess with anything else. I I did a little little messing around with the smoothing groups, but that's nothing really really complicated or anything like that. In fact all I did was it hit an auto smooth and then I just cut this front front piece right here off onto its own group. And that's all I've done. So I'm still exactly where where I left everybody. But I did cut this off and add that box inside and I did extend this rod to to be able to go back because the slide goes back this far here for for the um the slide catch groove to actually go as far back as the slide catch. And you can see that my channel's there and it misses a little bit here, but I'm not I'm not worried about it. Nobody's gonna be able to see that at all. So I'm ready to unwrap and what I've done is I've attached some parts but not all um, because I like to do my unwrap in in uh, pieces um, because I use a separate application, I don't like to send the whole gun and try to un unwrap everything at one time because it's it's harder to to see, as well as the potential for errors and crashes and and things like that can make it so I have to redo a lot. But if I just do it in piece by piece, um, then I can bring them back together later and then and then check the uh, the packing of the unwraps to make sure I'm making good use of my space. So all I need to do is export. I need to export selected, sorry, file, export selected, and this is going to my UDK folder, because I defaulted it, 
So the max source into this tutorials Glock to UV and I need it to be an OBJ and I am once again going to overwrite that low res version. Save that and just hit export and then done. Then I bring up this other app which is Unfold 3D and I go load and I pick the Glock here. And you can see it's come in. And now I'm just going to go point to point using edge to edge. Holding Alt here, I can go all the way around. Get this guy to there. And just cut these around. Again, it's very difficult for any application to just decide on your your edges and your seams for you. Most of them, if not all of them, have to have to have your input. So I'm going to run this guy down here. You can see it wants to connect that way, so I'll help this here. And then I'll go back to there, come to the front, and just chop this whole guy out. I haven't done anything to this different than the low res version, so it's nice and simple. I did cut off the bottom of this face because it's tucked in there. Okay, and now the barrel can run around the inside. And I'll, uh, just to help it out, I'll, I'll cut it here. If I look this in wireframe, I also cut out the outer barrel. Um, I moved, moved it out because this was a tube. I just took the outer tube and moved it to the front because I don't need all that space back there that I can't see when I go to paint. So let me get in here. Can't go too far because it, it wants to draw the, uh, shortest route possible. And screw that up there. Okay, the cylinder always needs a cut here. There's a orange thing going on there and the reason for that is because it always needs to have uh, a cut otherwise it considers it a hole and this this application uh, flags that there's an orange marker everything that's orange in this app is bad news. However, that's you know having a hole is not bad. It's just telling you that it's there. Okay. Try to figure out what's best here. You see me sometimes pick an edge and then deselect this because uh, I can hit an edge and then hit F and it will uh, center my camera on it on whatever the very last edge I picked was. Otherwise it's just kind of panning or orbiting around a, a random point and that can, uh, can get me into trouble. I'm going to go to try to figure out what, what's really going on over here. Oh, the other thing I did um, was I did go ahead and chamfer the rear sight, um, which, again, was is such a non-issue. I showed you guys 100 chamfers, so don't worry 
about, oh, you know, how do I do a chamfer? You just select the edges and hit chamfer. Dial in the amount, and you're done. Also, I cut the bottom of this guy off, which shows an already orange seam for me. I'm going to have this guy get cut off. And keeping this, let me hit F here. I'm rotating around it. So I'm just going to rush around here. Let that get cut. I do know for a fact that those corners are going to have issue. And these will actually lay out okay. This box I added needs some help. I'm going to want to cut this out. So it won't be able to figure that out. And if I really want to help it, I can actually cut off this edge here. Okay, so I'll have a, that strip. Alright, now it should be able to go around that. Pretty sure I'm going to want to do this. Again, if I hit F on the last uh, last edge I picked, then it can uh, rotate my cursor around it. And these should unfold okay. Should just flap down on each one of these while that remains. And I might be in good shape. However, I know I'm probably gonna need to cut this to help it figure out what's going on here to here and then I'll go ahead and do the inside which is going to leave me with a pretty thin UV strip so actually I'm not going to do that I'm going to keep this one one little piece and I'm just going to help the corners I was holding the wrong hotkey there. Got to do this guy. Need to see what's going on up here. the front okay should should be okay I'm gonna want to help these corners probably need to help that corner and that corner Now I think I'm going to be okay. It'll tell me if I have any anything I missed. Hopefully. And I just hit the auto unwrap. And I don't... Didn't like some of what was going on over here. So let me undo... doesn't like unwrapping around this whole guy and the reason is because I forgot this slide channel which is important because that dips in oh and I also didn't get the other side 
of the grooves, so it freaked out on that. So all that makes sense. It's when things don't make sense, you don't know why they're giving you errors, that there's a problem. Happen here. Don't to go that way. Okay. Think I'm good. Good, good, good. Let me uh, help this corner and that corner <coughs> and these back here. So we can split that and fold it out outwards. Let's see what we get. Cut it, then rip it. And do a much better job now. So it did kind of have issues here, which it really shouldn't have. You can see that. It's nice and straight everywhere, but here. So let me try to so undo, get back to my edges, try to figure out what I can do to help that. And I think one of the things. would be just to split this in half. And I think that'll help. I could also run a split all the way down the middle segment here. Just basically separate my top. from my side, and again, I'm painting this on the mo surface of the model, so my seams are not catastrophic. And if I cut it in half, it's not so long, I can pack it a little easier, and you will not see any problems happening here. It'll still retain the same smoothing group. Okay, let's give that a shot. I think it looks better. At an angle, but it's only because we put this piece at an angle to try and pack it, which I show I missed missed something right around there at some point. Right there. Now it's flat, so just check my checker. Checker, checker. Checker, check it out, y'all. Thing looks alright. I got a little slider here I can use to increase the resolution of it, increase the tiling. And I think it looks okay. Was able to figure everything out pretty decently. 
again, this is a wonderful, wonderful application. Let me, I got a little bit of weird weirdness going on here, which is probably this guy here. So what I can try to do is just do a little bit of relax a couple times. to help that spread out some. If I cut it one more, you can see one side's okay and the other's not, which is, yeah, is the problem. I didn't go all the way like that. Cut. Now at least they're both a little wonky. No biggie. It's going to be relatively minor texture detail on there. Some scrapes and things. So I think this is good. So I can save that and go back to Max. I can now delete. And I can import. Go find that. I'm just rename that back to slide. I don't know why my finger always hits that S. And I put the material back on. And I'm going to want to do my smoothing grips again. You can see coming out of an OBJ doesn't doesn't always retain your smoothing grips. Uh, hide all. It's, it's back in the same spot. And if I look at the unwrap, you can see that it's laid out nicely. It's not going to be this tight because I am going to get everything on one including all the other bits and bobs. Probably including the bullet, however, I may put the bullet on its own little separate texture. But then again, I may not. Third, third person view uh, version of the gun is not going to have a bullet in there. It's too minor. Guy be running around reloading. And you're not going to be sitting there staring at them. You should be worrying about what's going on in the game. If you're not, and you're worried about these animations, then there's, the game's not fun enough. So that one's okay. And I can pretty much move on to the next part, which would be this piece. And I did add some of these details. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and detach this guy. Just get it in there as well. And do the trigger. I could probably attach the rod too because it's not really going to get in the way. If I look at wireframe, I can get to that pretty easy. The trigger is going to be animated. So I'll probably do the trigger and the mag separately. And the bullet, obviously, going to do separately. And then I should be good to go. And actually, I'm going to attach the slide cover. So if I hide unselected, you can see this is what the main piece of the gun is. It's completely 100% unanimated at all times. And all I got to do is just go through and, and hit that unwrap. So I'm going to do that now. So I can just go File, Export Selected. Overwrite that first one to export. Oops too fast. Okay. Go back to my program and just go reload. Okay, let me show my wired view. And just start cutting. Trying to think what's better to do here.
this can again be a little a little tough sometimes when you've now got a lot of curvature to figure out where you want your seams. Just gotta kinda think about where it's gonna unfold everything. Gonna run up this line here. Yeah, go ahead and go. Go down this guy. Not a whole lot I can say about doing this. Make it any funner. Because it's just not that fun. But it's not horrible. In a way I kind of find it a little relaxing. Can I definitely have some issues if I just leave it as is. I'll have to help that out with some cuts. I just want to get this to be one piece. That way I can easily isolate when I go to paint. And I want to do the same on this guy. Okay, let me just cut the bottom off probably gonna need to do a couple extra cuts going around everywhere just to help with these curves and stuff so what I'm gonna do is I know that in between these here is where I have my grip uh, texture where it's bumpy for your fingers to no slip grip on. So I, if I cut that out, I can isolate that easy in the uh, in the in the uh, texture painting. However, I can also use that to my advantage to help the unwrap figure everything out and unfold it nice and easy. Let's see. Yep, kept that on the upper.
trigger separated. It's not going to love me if I do not give it help on that inside curve. It's not going to love me here either. But I'll see what it does before I start cutting. It's probably not going to love me unless I do at least like that. Then it'll probably fold over, so I'm going to go ahead and just split. I'm definitely going to need help there. I'm also thinking I might as well cut that strip off. Which kind of makes me think I might as well cut that strip off. In which case, I probably don't need these, but I'll see what I get. How much orange it flags on me. And I don't actually don't need that. I keep that one solid piece. Although, however, I'm not going to do that because it's a separation between metal and plastic. And again, I want to be able to easily distinguish that myself when I go to paint this and look at that template. I fill a template with fill, you know, a portion of it with metal and fill a portion of it with plastic. It's a lot easier than trying to do a hand painted separation between two obviously separate materials such as plastic and metal. I think that'll do okay there. Not sure what's going to happen here. It's probably going to need some help by cutting one of these or something, but I'll, I'll hold off on that. There's no way it's going to figure this out. So I'm going to get rid of those lips. should be able to flap open like a cardboard box. Pretty sure this is going to be okay, except I definitely need to help this in these corners. And these corners, so this can unfold like a box. Okay, I'm going to want to groove that channel. Let me get this outer one hit F so I can zoom in and get a quick rotation around that gang and then split it down the middle. Every cylinder needs a cut, at least one. Okay, just going to cut this guy off and then let it let it flap those out like a box. Everything else I think might work. Might, might, might. I say might a lot because it's very dependent. Probably want to cut this off, because again, it's the separation between plastic and metal. Get one of these. And just run around this guy here.
just cut off that trim, and then a trim needs a way to separate, so I'm just going to cut it into four bits so I don't have overly long, thin segments. I've got a couple of short ones I can stack on top of each other instead of end to end. I'm not sure what's going to happen here, so I'm just going to help it, like so. And now, we'll see what we get. I can almost guarantee I missed something. Had to have. Can't see it yet. I know these are going to freak. Yeah, we got a little orange, orange going on there. Help this one too. So I might be able to get away with cutting right there. And cutting right there. Might be able to. It doesn't like me here either. So we'll cut that better. Just checker checker. It's not too bad. There's not too many overly small little strips. There's a few. Fortunately, there's no way for me to say I want to seam that back. So I'd have to undo back pretty far, but that's no biggie. It's not going to hurt nothing. It did not do that bad of a job at all. Definitely paintable. I can most certainly hit this with the brush. I like to hand paint my textures from scratch using new photos. Do use reference, don't use photos. Um, gives a little bit more of an artistic look to it. It's not always great or anything like that. It's not like I'm, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio at it, but um. Okay. Okay, so I can save that. File save. Then I can delete this monster. And import this beautiful princess in its place. And I can do these. Oh, and I did neglect to mention that I cut the top off of the trigger. I didn't chamfer it though, or smooth it out or anything, because I don't think it's going to be all that noticeable. Not enough to even warrant doing, to be honest with you. It won't hurt the polygon count, it won't hurt my time, it won't hurt my patience. I just, it's just not going to do any, it's not important enough to worry about. The trigger looks okay. It could be curved a little bit more in here and there, you know. It could obviously it could be turbo smooth to 100 million polygons and be so ridiculously smooth that it's beyond perfect. But it's not gonna it's not gonna do any good, really, in the, in the context of what we're doing here. So it's gonna reload. And I'm going to keep going around here. Alright, so... Talking about painting... I did say that I'm not going to... Um, do an actual tutorial... On texturing this, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm not. But I am going to texture it. And like I said, I will... Put up a video... Of me texturing it, but it's going to be a speed painting. If you go to ratsarmy.com, there's 
a, at least one speed painting on there already. Let's just put to goofy music just to kind of show show it getting worked from scratch to finish. Not doing a tutorial on that. But I'm also going decided that I'm going to texture three basic versions. However, I'm going to do them all at one time. I'm um, going to have a version of the Glock that is brand new, like most of the uh, most of the source, most of the reference that I've got. I'm also going to do a worn version that has a fair amount of wear and tear, which would be in the form of like just kind of worn out metal a little bit, you know, rougher specular, spotted, pitted, some dents here and there, maybe maybe a little bit of dirt. And then what I was thinking would be kind of cool, and some people might find useful, is I'm going to do a uh, post-apocalyptic version, basically, where the thing is just beat. Beat within an inch of its life. Something that you would find in, like, Fallout or, you know, some game where it's, you know, like Rage or something, where it's very, very rusty and, and just, just overly, overly used. You know, um, and then what I'll do is I'll give that out now. I'll probably save them out as TGAs for people, but I'm also going to have a Photoshop file that I will make available that we will make available for people who help our cause, and you can pick and choose your the layers you want to want to use. and uh, go from there. Which I think come in handy for people, because it'll all fit. It doesn't matter which, which one you choose. It'll all work. It'll all be to painted to the same template, which I'm going to do my best to make sure is as clean as possible. But again, I'm not. This is this is just showing me doing it. Kind of half explaining. There's really not a lot to say. You just gotta make logical seams um, where you, where it can the system can figure out how to flap it open. And this program gives you a nice little warning mode with the orange to show you, hey. What are you thinking? You got something messed up here you need to fix. So get to fixing. And you see the orange and you can check your checker and fix it. It's nice. It's almost almost foolproof, though I've I've broken that rule. It's pretty stable too, which is nice. This has crashed on me before. In fact it crashed during the video, but it's pretty rare. It's usually something wrong with your model. If it does, in fact, crash. Okay. I think I might be okay. I'm not sure if what I've done inside here is enough or not. have split out this and I'm not sure if I need to add, add a little bit more help on these these rims here this might not be able to figure this round corner out so let's just see what we get okay I'm gonna undo I never cut a strip on this guy so let me do that Don't need that to go both ways. I 
Do it in the middle there. No, it doesn't match. It matches there. I might actually be able to do away with the long, thin strips. By getting rid of this stuff. It's just coming out here and giving it a couple of helper cuts. Like such. Probably gonna need to help this. And again, I might be able to do the same thing here. Just get rid of this strip. Let's see what I get. That'd be better. So it'd be one piece, and I can just help those. Corners. I cut them like that so we can, we can split it. Like try to try to cut a piece of paper that you can fold around a balloon and not overlap or have any wrinkles. That's the challenge of unwrapping a model, and it can be done if you know what you're doing. You've done it a hundred bazillion times like I have. This is model number 172,000 or something. That's part of the reason why I'm a little impatient in doing it. It's that last step before you get to go on and actually have fun with your model, paint it or, or animate it, and it's like, oh god, I gotta, I gotta do this. Yay. But like I said, it's, it's it's not the worst experience in the world. It's just not great. Of all the processes in 3D, I'd say unwrapping is the least entertaining. I don't want to say the least rewarding, because it is rewarding to get a good unwrap and get texture lined up and everything, and everything looks nice and fluid and seamless, and you just, oh yes, I feel great. Because I spent that time, and sometimes you, you don't spend that time, and then you go to paint it, or you go to throw your texture on it, and then you're like, I should have spent that time. Okay, I'm just going to call this mag, and I'm going to detach this to trigger. So, that's everything unwrapped, except this guy here. So I'm just going to send this one over. I'll write the same name again. I didn't really, really need to name it Glock. I could have just called it Output, you know, or something. But I like to give it a give it a name. I want to separate shell from slug. It's never going to figure this out if I don't help it out because it dips in like that. It may or may not be able to figure that out. Probably not. Absolutely, under all circumstances, you need a shot going down there. Even though I probably don't need to hit every single one of these, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going to guarantee that the unwrap will be okay. This bullet will probably end up with a 512 or a 256. It might be able to figure this out. It might be able to stretch it out enough. It might not. Let's just go early and see what we get. No, it wasn't too bad. It, cur it has to curve it a little bit. You can see it's slightly wavy. 
but the inside here of the bullet is not happy with me at all, and that's okay. Because I just need one cut going in, and then it can Pac-Man that bas uh, bad boy. And work out a little better. This is not great, but I might be able to mess with the tension. I just hit this a bunch of times and it relaxes it. If I go with a broader stroke, it moves it a little farther. And you can see the kind of detail it's going to be on here. It's not going to be too bad. You can engrave this. You can say, hit pause is coming for you or something. Or kill number 300. Okay, I got a little interrupted there. So everything looks good. Um, Unwraps all right, and like I said, I can. It doesn't. If this, if it had just put this here, it could have made this so much bigger, and that would fit in there. Okay, except this, you know, is a little bit in the way. So this in the corner, and this over here. I can definitely work this to use better space. I mean, these these filthy machines don't don't know what what we really want. So save that again, or for the first time. I can delete that. No, I'm not going to delete that because I want it to be centered. Uh, my family's bugging me about going to movies. Okay, here we go. I don't want to actually... Um, yeah, you know what. I'll just delete it. It's easy fix. It's not going to have my um, pivot in the right spot. Okay, you can see it puts my pivot at the center, but it's really easy, just centered object. Okay, now in order to make a shell out of the perfect, the unwrapped one, which I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix, like I said I was hoping I could do. It's going to be pretty funny if I can't make it any better, because then I can eat my own words and everybody can say, ooh. You got burned. And I might be getting burned here because I might not be able to go much higher than that. This stupid machine might have beat me this time. I vow my revenge. However, already I know I can get. Oops. I can get significantly larger. So I've defeated the machine. And that makes me happy. Every once in a while I'll actually defeat a computer at chess, which some people think is easy, or some people think is impossible. I think it's kind of random. I get lucky. I could boost that up a little bit more. Maybe be able to... nope. So that's about as good as I can get, so I'm just going to space it out some so I don't hit. One of the important things is you, you do not hit when you're going to paint. You need padding. And padding is the distance between these shapes. And uh, the lower res texture you're going to use, the more padding you need. If this was a 2x2 two two texture, 2 pixels by 2 pixels, um, so I'm, I'm dead. You know, There's nothing I can do. If this is a 40 million pixel across thing, I could get like that and still that there's like 500 pixels in there you know but if this is a 4096 then I have a decent amount of of padding here that counts as a lot of pixels if this is a 512 it's it's a lot less than that and this is probably going to end up being a 512 so I need my padding to be pretty pretty wide so that they don't cross over each other and the reason being um when you go to make your LOD models, your lower detail models, um, it will actually still use the same texture, but some of these edges might move a little bit when you go to do it, especially if you do an auto auto algorithm, such as uh, Simply Gone um, or Pro Optimize or something. It will uh, it will often move your move your stuff around okay so now 
a little bit of a tricky trick here. Instead of extruding that back, which is going to put stuff on the wrong axis, I mean, you know, it's gonna, it's not going to be unwrapped. I'm going to make a copy of the outer shell and use that for the inner shell. Which means if I put any engraving on here, I gotta watch out because that's gonna show up in there. So I'm not gonna engrave the the shell, which I'm, it's pretty rare you see a bullet with an uh, engraved shell. It's usually the, the slug if it's gonna have anything. And then what I need to do though is I need to flip it over by its normals. Okay, and I collapse to and hit four again. And what I'm gonna do is just going to move it forward a little bit. I'm going to move this forward, however, I'm going to check off preserve UVs so that I don't break my UVs that are already there. Now I can move this back. And now I can pretty much just weld this to it, even though I'm not a bit but too far, even though I'm not a perfect cylinder, the the bottom down there is going to be a little bit less of a radius than the uh, front over here. It's going to be so unnoticeable because this is going to be a little particle that goes flipping out into my world and disappears after a couple of seconds. And it's going to be very small. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's going to move this one in and flip to normal. Uh, normal, 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 normal. It's up here. Okay. Just gonna move that. Nope. Gonna move that in line here as best I can, and then I'm gonna. Disconnect it. Go, you yeah. stupid thing. I just, I don't know if it knows what, which one I'm trying to do. Let's try target weld instead. Better. Okay, and now if I texture a primer back here, it's going to be a little bit of a smaller primer. Actually, yeah, it'll be small because I didn't have UVs checked. And now if I look at my unwrap, pretty much the same thing. It's just minus the bullet, which was here. So all I gotta do is paint the outside of this guy, and my shell gets an automatic paint job, and all is well. That ends well. Okay, this is gonna be in a separate scene. I'll save that out later. Then I need to combine these and mess with my packing, which is just basically um, puzzle puzzle pieces that you need to fit together as best as you can to make it make it as tight as you can. And um, I'm gonna probably show about five minutes of it, and then I'm just gonna pause the video and show you how it looks when I'm done, um, because it's not worth spending the gigabytes, the download time, and your time doing because it's really just it's leg work, you know. There's no real explanation necessary. So our unwrap is good. Like I said we just need to pack it and we're good to go. So I'm gonna stop this and code and I will be back to start the packing of this guy. Uh, whether or not this ends up in this video or the next one I can't tell you right now. You'll know. And then um then we can pretty much start preparing it for rigging and animation. Alright?